today on Facebook Live. We're in Townsville and we're going hunting for uh, IEDs and explosives and things that are not meant to be there underneath the road. So I'm here with um, the 11 Engineering Regiment and I'm here with Jacinda, with Ben and with Glenn. And um, what have we got? What have we got? Um, got here today? We've got some some metal detectors. And um, tell me a bit about uh, these metal detectors. Yeah, Nick. Uh, these metal detectors here are designed to pick up uh, metallic items in the ground, and they can pick up to a small nail size. So the bottom half of it is a carbon fibre shaft. Yep. With no metal work in that bottom section. Awesome. So um, let's um, let's switch it on. Let's see what it can do, and we'll we'll go through the through the process. Obviously, some, some cool noises at the moment. Tell me a bit about what uh, what Glenn's doing at the moment. So in the, at now he's going through the process of uh, balancing the mine lab to the ground. So all the soils have a different type of iron content in the ground. So it's just picking up what's in the ground at the moment so it can identify uh, a different uh, metallic object. Okay, so if we if we went to the beach and we started doing this, it would obviously be different and we still need to go through the same process. Yeah, that's right. Every time we turn it on, go through the same process. Awesome. Now these things are black with some carbon bits. How is there anything really different about between these ones, the ones that the Australian Army use, and the ones that uh, you see the old men on the beach using? Uh, yeah, the one the Fossickers use is designed to pick up different uh, metal, different metals, so between gold and silver. Yep. And they're more designed to find bits of gold. Yep. And whereas this one's designed to, to I suppose, find mines. Yeah, yeah, find uh, metallic objects. How long does this normally take to prove? Uh, just a couple of minutes to get it up and going. Okay. And so you guys are up here, um, 11 Engineer Regiment. Um, where are you normally based? Uh, us three are normally based in Rockhampton. Uh, the regiment covers from Townsville, Rockhampton, Brisbane, and out to Green Bank. And um, you're up here as part of Exercise Talisman Sabre? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we're up here mounting, getting ready for Talisman Sabre. Fantastic. So, um, reserves, reserve unit. What do you What do you do when you're not not here with um, with mine detectors and bushmasters and and we weapons? What do you do on the, on the civilian street? Uh, so my normal job, I work for Ergon Energy. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a linesman there. Okay. Fantastic. Um, what about yourself, Jacinda? What do you do when you when you're not here? Um, so I'm a police officer in the civilian world. Um, so yeah, it's an entirely different job to what we're doing here today. And does the different part about it make it make it a, a better and just a, a nice change? Yeah, it's really nice. It's nice being around um, like a different mateship, a different group of people as well. Um, so yeah, and I have a lot of fun with these guys. And so you just change the uniform from blue to, to green? Yeah, exactly. It's just a, a different uniform and a different role. Okay, so we're ready to go here. Here we would you tell us a bit about what you're uh, what you're doing there. We'll just give him the the microphone. Um, I'm just using the test piece. Um, if you can just oh. the metal detector. So this um, this here has a very small amount of metallic in, metallic um, in it, and it's just testing the just testing it, and then this here is for the depth that it, a, I, an explosive is normally, um, how deep it is. And you can normally just hear just a faint, yep. just a faint noise. And you've got and that. that's what we're looking for. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. So let's, um, let's, let's sort of set up the scenario that we've got here. This obviously is a, a training exercise. This is not, not for real, but um, this is part of the role that your, that the engineer regiment is is tasked to do and that you'll be doing in, as part of Exercise Talisman Saber. Is that right, Glenn? Uh, yeah, that's right, Nick. Cool. All right, let's 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 have a look about this this scenario here. We're obviously at the top of what is a, uh, a creek crossing. And um, this is, would it be reasonable to say this is a, a, a place that if you wanted to stop 
some vehicles. This is where you'd, you'd, you'd put that obstacle? Yeah, because it's a choke point created by the creek, so you can only cross in one area. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to search. That's the right term? Yep, we're going to um, search through the route to make sure it's safe to proceed through with the convoy. Um, and you normally operate as, as a team of three or four or...? Uh, generally an eight-man session. Yep. And depending on on how we're going to conduct the search is how many uh, personnel will deploy. Fantastic. So we've got, obviously, a team of three here today, and for this training exercise, that's what we're going we're gonna to utilise. So Glenn's going to take it away and uh, show us, show us what's, how it's done. Now, obviously, the camera, the camera angle is in the, in the area that's not searched, but for the benefit of the activity, we're going to give you the best angle we can. I'll just hop out of the way. So tell me a bit about what, um, what Glenn's doing in, in terms of the, the speed and what he's looking for. So in this case, Nick, he's just uh, sweeping down the road with his mine lab. So he's looking to be covering um, one wheel, wheel track and into the middle there. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's looking, scanning with his eyes to see any disturbance of the ground. And also if the mine lab picks up any metal content in the ground. Okay. And so we're working, walking on some pretty hard packed stuff. It's really hard to dig up and it would be pretty obvious if you did. Yeah, that's right. So at this place here, he's moving a lot quicker because it's uh, nice hard ground. And there's, there's a few different types of mines that it would be, he would be looking for or that exist. Can you tell me a bit about the types of mines? Yeah, so some of the different types of initiation sets for mines, you can have uh, pressure plates where you stand on them. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you can have uh, tilt rod mines and uh, trip wires. And, and um, there's, a, there's a term that everyone seems to be familiar with, which is IED. Can you tell me what that stands for and what, what I suppose that the threat of that is? Yeah, so IED stands for Improvised Explosive Device. So, which is generally uh, used from used by non-standard militaries. So, um, someone looking to disrupt, like a non-government organisation. Uh, so, it's just something that's homemade. Okay. And generally, they can be um, victim-operated, where the person stands on them or remote-controlled. Um, and it, the speed of how long this is conducted does it just vary all the time, or? Yeah, it very depends on the uh, obstacle where, or the uh, vulnerable point we're trying to cross. Okay. Um, just a reminder that we are live, so if you've got a question for any of these engineers or about what we're, what we're up to or what's involved with being a, um, a combat engineer, um, ask away and we'll, uh, we'll get to them as we, as we go through. Um, so what's going to happen when we, when we find something? Uh, so if we get an indication on the mine lab, we're going to uh, investigate it further to see what it is. So at that stage, uh, Glenn will find out where exactly it is, mark it, and then um, using the mine prodder, uh, find out where it is in there, and then use the paintbrush to excavate it to see if it is something or not. And figuratively speaking, is this, is this it would be this dangerous work? I'm like, you're, you seem quite exposed. Is there, if you got, would you have people looking out for you and? Yes, yeah, you'll have uh, protection parties out there. Yeah. So I suppose, is that where the teamwork part comes in together, like watching these guys back? Yes, that's where the teamwork comes in. So everyone's watching each other's back. Um, and would you do you work with other aspects? Like, would there be the, the chance there to work, to work with dogs or with, to work with um, other sort of devices or, or units? Or yes, so we can also use uh, the EDD dogs, the explosive detection dogs, to uh, sn to sniff out if there's any explosives out here. Okay. So, and the dogs, and, and as well as the the mine labs, and they'd all sort of come together to try and 
work out whether this, this is safe to, to bring vehicles through and people through? Yeah, that's right. Make sure it's safe for the convoy to proceed. Okay, so looks like Glenn might have might have found something there. Um, so and I guess there's there's a sort of standard process that that everyone's now going to to go through. Yeah, he's just going through the standard process of uh, identifying exactly where it is. So just trying to to pinpoint and and really get to the the idea of whether it's big, whether it's small, whether it's a wire or something. Yeah, so he's just. All right, we've got a got a signal there. So, um, whilst Glenn's going to go through his drills, is it what you can see there? Um, it's just what breaking breaking down the the mine lab, making it a bit bit smaller. Are they back? Do they carry them around in a backpack, or are they normally in a vehicle? Uh, there is a little backpack that can go in. It generally stays in the vehicle until it's recorded. So I think Jacinda's just making a mark there saying that that's the mark that she's um, searched up to. Um, and everyone seems to be making very deliberate deliberate efforts to, to only walk in the area that they've, they've cleared. I might go on up and uh, have, a, have a bit more of a closer look with, um, with, with, with Glenn. So for the purposes of the training training area, I'm just coming alongside here. So, so Glenn, tell us a bit about what you what you're doing here. Um, I'm just trying to expose um, the item or something that we've found under here, um, and just try to get as much dirt off so we can have a visual on whatever it is. All right. Well, I'll leave you to it. I'll get back a little bit. And I might ask a few, get a few questions from, from the people while I'm paused. So Nick Nick asked how do they know they found something. So he, the, uh, the metal detector had a, had a headset. So he just said that uh, he the, had a headset in and the metal detector gave off a, a signature. So what's, um, what material is that, um, that mine probe made out of? Uh, it's made of a non-metallic, it's um, normally made of plastic. Um, that way it can't spark anything and it can't be too aggressive on it. And the aim of the game is just to really understand how big or how small the item is. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. Um, he'll be digging for days. Now, I, I don't know whether he's going to dig for days, but he's certainly going to be very careful about what he, what he finds. Um... What other questions we got? Do, 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 do. Okay. So paintbrush, just to just to be nice and and gentle with whatever you're 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 playing with. Yes, that's correct. We don't want to be too aggressive on it, um, otherwise that might set whatever it's off, or um, it might disturb it too much. And what does it feel like when you're uh, on your stomach, sort of dusting off something that pot potentially could be quite dangerous? Is it is it sort of exciting? Are you nervous? Are you relying on training? Or what what do you feel? Um, you're just relying on training. Like we we know what we're supposed to do, and uh, we just got to get in and do it. And there's no point just sort of marking something and then calling someone else in to 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 destroy it. It's it's more about sort of understanding what it is so you understand the threat? That's correct, because it may not be anything at all. Okay. So Zachary Scott asked, what kind of protective wear are you you're wearing? You, might, you may have seen these bomb disposal guys with the big Michelin man suits. Uh, we're, wearing, uh, we're wearing body armour and a helmet at the moment. So clean skin. Ish. So, what have you found? Uh, it was a, all it was was a rock. Okay. So, coast is clear. We're good. All right. So, the other guys, obviously, this is the, the teamwork aspect, watching each other's back. 
um, whilst they sort of manage the threat level. This is a, a pretty standard exercise that you're going to do a few times on Talisman Sabre. Yes, that's correct. We'll be providing the search element for the convoy escorts. Okay. Um, it is a very deliberate exercise. Yes, yeah, very deliberate. Okay. Um, we'll get, see if we've got some more questions from the go. So Jack and, uh, and Troy have asked sort of what he feels like and what, what he's sort of found. So I think you've sort of, sort of seen it. Um, they've asked what sort of paintbrush it is. It doesn't really matter what sort of paintbrush it is. Um, it, it's just a paintbrush, isn't it? It's just a paintbrush, a soft one. Soft yep. bristle. Um, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And is there anything special that goes into to becoming a combat engineer? Or might, is there um, any particular requirements, particularly from, from an Army Reserve perspective? Um, well, I suppose it's, it's like most roles in the Army. You have to have demonstrate some level of um, mateship um, and teamwork, primarily. Um, and obviously, we do training specifically for combat engineer role. Um, but in terms of education requirements or anything else like that, it's 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 reasonably straightforward, like other roles in the in to 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 general entry roles. Yeah, that's correct. It's very similar to um, say like riflemen or, or other um, general entry roles. Okay, that might be an interesting question for you, Glenn. What makes it what makes it different to to being a rifleman? Why is it so much cooler being a combat engineer rather than being an infantry soldier? Because uh, we get to make stuff and then blow it up. All right, so making stuff and blowing stuff up. So that's um, that sounds pretty good versus walking around. Versus walking around the bush, yes. All right, so there's there's great roles about, great things about every role, but um, everyone's obviously going to show a little bit of bias, and um, we're here today to, to talk about what, what the engineers do. So we might keep going with the, the activity. We'll continue to clear off the rest of the... Um, the rest of this creek um, as we move up. So keep the questions coming if you've got them. So Jake asked what unit you're from? 11 Engineer Regiment. And 11 Engineer Regiment is not just from Rockhampton where you are, it's also located in? Townsville, Brisbane and Green Bank area. And there's people from all of those areas who have come here for exercise talisman saber? Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, uh, what other questions go on? Yes, of course, it was a rock. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So how old do you have to be? You have to be um, 17. Yes, 17, yep. 17 to join. Um, so there's, there's lots of, um, you know, these roles in, in, you can do as, as part of a res the Army Reserve. Um, how long have you been in the Army Reserve for? I've been in for 16 years. 16 years. So, and you've done a whole pile of different different things, apart from you know you obviously qualified in this particular stuff. You've you've got some some leadership in terms of rank. Yes, so I've done leadership uh, courses to get where I am. I've also done ve heavy vehicle courses as well. Uh, other guys have done plant courses. So, and that's the some of the things about being an engineer. There's lots of different things involved, isn't there? Yes, that's right. So um, you you need to create stuff. What sort of things do you do you make or create as part of your role? Uh, so yeah, we can build shelters and sentry posts, uh, field fortifications. Um, and you've got it's not just you and picks and shovels as well. You've got some some heavy equipment. Yes, so we have all the plant equipment as well to assist with. Um, so. Um, so Jack asked, "How much is the course?" Well, the, you know, if you if you join and you're eligible, the, all this training is is part of your role. You actually get paid to train. You get paid to train. So you get paid to know how to do this, and then you get paid to. Um, so you talk about building stuff. Destroying stuff is another part of your role. Yes, that's right. We get to uh, build it, then destroy it. And 
when you say destroy, it's not just driving a bulldozer through it. We're talking about blowing things up, aren't we? Yeah, we're talking about using explosives. Um, would that be the best part of the role? Oh, of course. Okay. And um, <laughs> and it, you uh, is it like how much how much science and training goes into explosives? Is it is it it's there's a bit more to it, isn't there? Yeah, there's a full detailed course that explains the theory behind how explosives work to get the desired effect. Okay. A couple of questions coming through. Here's a good one. Um, uh, Connor Dwyer asks, so uh, what's your referred to as, as corporal? These, these two guys are sappers. How did you, um, why do they call combat engineers sappers? Uh, that comes from the Royal Engineers. That's passed down from them, and that was awarded to them by the Queen for the saps that you see dig under the towers, so they become sappers. Okay. Well, there you go. Good question. Um, Paul Black asks, what's the red thing on the end of their barrels? Is that a flamethrower? No, it's not a, not a flamethrower. You can probably help. Yep. Uh, that's the BFA, blank firing attachment. So when we're using blanks, that's on there to make the weapon automatic. So okay. reloads. So, yep. Exercise tells for Sabre using, they were going to be using blanks rather than live ammunition, so it's a training exercise, so that's uh, that's part of the, the deal. Um, what else do we have? Cameron Johnson asked, do they use the enhanced FADA Ostai? Yes, they do, and we'll, when we get a bit further up the hill, we'll, we'll show you a bit more about that. Um, Kai Brown, what sort of things do you build? I think we Sort of talk a bit more about what, what you've built in the past in your in your time over 16 years. Yeah, so I've built sentry posts, uh, small shelters, uh, bridge target that we could use for on a demolitions range. So you build a bridge and, and then, then you blew it up? Yep, that's right. How big was the bridge? Uh, only a couple of metres. Okay. But. All right, so... We're just making way for the for the bushmaster, so we don't want to get run over. So, we'll keep talking off camera here while the bushmaster moves into position. So, part of this this activity that we're doing is um is two stages. So we showed you a bit about how we can search a ground and take a route clearance. We're also going to show you a bit about a basic search for a car. Um, so we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. So at the moment you can see the bushmaster, twelve and a half tons of Australian made protected mobility vehicle rolling on 20s um, we did a we did a Facebook live in 360 in one of those yesterday so you can have a look on defense jobs Facebook page and have a look about that that was pretty pretty amazing experience you can also see that there is as there's a only a driver in there, that Glenn's actually guiding. He's guiding the vehicle into position, so obviously they're hard to see. So the rear view mirrors only cover so much. Is everyone qualified as a guide for a vehicle? Uh, no, only the drivers get that training during their driver course. Okay, fantastic. So we might just come up and. Um, We'll just briefly talk about the uh, the bushmaster, and so your 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 actually your role is to sort of find mines, and mines can do a lot of damage. Can you talk a bit about, I suppose, the bushmaster and how its design can keep people safe inside from mines? Yeah, so the bushmaster. We might just come up a bit closer, just so we can sort of show it a bit better. So the bushmaster has what they call a V-shaped hole. And that is designed to project the blast waves away from the vehicle. So everyone remains safe inside and, you know, if it did happen to hit hit a mine, it would the blast goes out. Yes, that's it, goes out. Rather right. than up. Instead of up, yep, and keeps everyone safe inside. And I think one of the other ones that we, we talked about yesterday on that Facebook Live, we, we talked about a couple of things like external fuel tanks, so things on the outside and... Um, the, the air system, so inside they can control whether the tyre pressures, whether they go up or down from, from inside the cabin. So there's a sort of few things that you can show you while it's here. I reckon 
Um, there's a couple of questions that have come through about the, the EF88, Glenn. We are um, able to get in tight and you can talk to us a bit about the EF88 and what makes it different to the, the normal style or the old style. Yeah, so this new star is a little bit lighter than the original. Uh, this one, you can't remove the barrel on it. Uh, it also has more Picatinny rails to attach accessories to it. So here, there. So these are the Picatinny rails, yep. Yep, and also has, we're mounting these Spectre sights, which has a one times and four times zoom on them. And so that's different to the old star because that, how much did the old star have? Yeah, the old star only had a one and a half. And so that means that you're looking through it and it, it's, it makes it one and a half times bigger. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, so for, for someone who's looking from the outside, what are the, the key differences in terms of looks that make you be able to determine whether this is an, an EF88 or an F88? Uh, these new ones are black. The obvious one. Uh, also, they generally come with a new, new scope on them. Uh, the pistol grip's different. Uh, these ones have a bipod on them. Okay. And do you, do you know what the exact weight difference is? Am I... Not off the top of my head. Not off the top of your head. We can, we can find that out for you a bit later. Um, do, do, do. Um, what do we got here? Just start looking to see if there's any relevant questions. What's the, the caliber on that? You know, how big a bullet is it? Is it the same uh, as before? Yes, yeah, same as before, 5.56 millimeter. Okay. Um, okay, so that, that sort of covers covers up most of the, the, the questions there. If anyone's got any other specific ones, we might be able to get to that. So we covered the type of scope. Um, uh, and and that the, that new new rifle, it's not available to everyone yet, isn't it? They're rolling it out slowly. Yeah, they're still rolling it out. Yep. Okay. And you're a reserve unit, and you've got one. Yep. So, if anyone sort of thinks that sometimes reserves don't get the latest kit, um, that's not true. Um, okay. Let's talk a bit about this next activity that we're we're going to do. Um, what sort of scenario is this in in and how are we going to sort of set it up? Yeah, so this has come on the back of a VCP search. It's crashing VCP? Vehicle checkpoint. Nice. Uh, so just to set up to check vehicles as they're moving through a route, uh, they come to an initial check where they're questioned and just a, a quick look. Um, if there's something suspect, then it's moved into a primary search bay where we can conduct a further search on it. Okay. And this is... A pretty standard sort of activity to, to I suppose, control or restrict movement in, a, in an area? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, so we've got our search car here and we've got our searches and we normally work as, as part of a team. With these, notice that these guys are, have now put their weapons down, they're, they're I suppose, clean, clean skin. Um, and why why wouldn't you do have a weapon for this? What in a in this sort of scenario, what would happen? Uh, because normally we'll have a sentry, i.e., being Ben or even a um, a vehicle mounted sentry. And that sort of gives you that's more sort of teamwork, allows you to concentrate on what you're doing here. That's correct. It allows us to uh, limit how much gear we have on us at the moment. Okay. And in this scenario, the driver's gone. They've been been taken away. Yes, they've been taken away for further questioning. So we're just faced with a vehicle that we want to just sort of check to see whether it, whether it's, uh, what's up with it, whether there's anything sus. Yes, whether it's got any suspicious items in it. Okay. Well, I'll leave you to it, and we'll talk to you as you as you as you do your thing. So two-man job. What do you? So you've got Jacinda looking right in there. And um, I'm checking to make sure she hasn't missed anything and um, so we can work together. Yep. So it's a, it's a fairly methodic, methodical process and the, the speed that you take is, is based on the threat level, I suppose? Yes, yes, that's correct. It, uh, it, all, determine, it all depends on if we've seen anything prior to this. 
So, question that's come through here as I'm, I'm looking looking through is, uh, Paul uh, Lowell Peggett asks, what's the fluffy stuff on your helmet? Um, that's um, so it limits uh, from a long distance. It will limit how much people can see the um, the shadow. Okay, so it breaks up the the round and yeah. shape of your head. Yes, that's correct. All right. So someone asked whether that's a giant dental tool. I don't know whether th that would fit in your mouth. You'd, you'd need a pretty big mouth. <laughs> no, it's not a, a dental tool. It's a, a search mirror. So it just enables us to um, have a better look at the undercarriage, undercarriage of the vehicle um, as opposed to getting on our hands and knees and having a look physically underneath. Okay. So you've just gone around and, and had a, a quick search. What, what's next? Um, so next we'll actually um, do a, the interior search of the vehicle. Um, so we'll, we'll go over now and open one of the doors and begin the interior search. Okay. Once again, you got any questions? Keep them coming. I'll see if I can and ask a few things. Someone's asked whether this Prius is, is, is armoured like the Bushmaster. Um, no. Um, that's probably the simple, simple, uh, simple answer. So someone asked um, when you're doing that activity before, what happens when you, you find an IED? If you did find one, what would you do? Uh, we will mark it, then we'll mark a lane to the IED or the explosive, and then we'll call um, the explosive audience disposal and they will come up, they will come in and um, do a controlled explosion on it. Okay. So your your role is really to, to find it, to locate it, determine what it is and then report it. To report, report it. Yep. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, David. Um, and you're just going through methodical door by door? Yeah, that's correct. So um, we just have a, a system where we go through and search the fittings and the floors and the seats. Um, we also look in behind um, the steering wheel um, to ensure that there no one's placed anything up the back. Um, we'll also go through bags and personal belongings um, to ensure there's nothing hidden in there as well. As you can see, there's a backpack in the back here. Um, and you're a police officer when you're not wearing green. Is this is it much different doing doing these vehicle searches with a in the green uniform, whether it is or the blue uniform? Um, no, it's really not much different at all. Probably the primary difference um, in green is that you have an external threat as opposed to, well, a and including an internal threat potentially as well. Um, so you've obviously got the ongoing warfare going around you, um, whereas obviously in the civilian world it's um, usually pretty peaceful. Okay, I'll leave you to it. We'll see if we can get through a few more questions. So asking where we are, we are um, just uh, in Townsville. We're just in the training area next to the um, Laverack Barracks. So Ricky's asked, uh, Ricky Hung's asked a question, um, what's all the stuff on your chest? So you able to just sort of take so, people through? So these are all weapon magazines. These are for the rifles. Um, these are grenade pouches. So we don't have any of that on us at the moment. Um, these are for our search, so this is a prodder, um, and that's pretty much all I have except for two water bottles and a camel pack on the back. And in, in here you've got... got some uh, I've got plates, steel plates. In here there's uh, one covering the chest, um, all the vital organs on the chest, and one covering the back, on the, right across the back. And what, how much weight would you be carrying? At um, the, how much weight would you be carrying at the moment? Sorry, I believe the the plates weigh up to ten kilos, ten kilograms, um, and plus I've got four kilograms of water and a few other bits of stuff, so probably around fifteen kilograms. And that's without a pack, and then plus your rifle, and plus all the other stuff that you might have to carry in a backpack. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. So, lots of gear. Lots and lots of gear. Okay, so. And we, we've conducted sort of half the search. Is there anything really much more to go? Um, no, you just continue around systematically um, 
And then once, um, obviously, you check in with the supervisor or the team leader to ensure that they're happy with the search. And if they're happy with the search and, and the person's being questioned and there's no suspicious items located, then they're free to move on through the vehicle checkpoint. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed that you've got gloves on. What, what's the purpose of, of, the, uh, of the gloves as part of the, the search? Uh, so obviously the gloves are just to ensure that we don't contaminate anything because obviously uh, if we do locate any items of interest, then likely that's going to have to be handed over to someone like the civilian police um, for further um, investigation. Okay. So, um, okay. Um, while we're here, we're just getting through some of the questions as we're, we're sort of moving as we go. So, um, Jess sort of asked us what's it like being an engineer um, from a female perspective. Is it negative, positive, something new? Um, personally, I think it's really great because you get to do things that um, I guess a lot of women haven't had the opportunity to, to do um, in the, well, I guess actually combat engineer role for women is, is a relatively new role. Um, and so uh, you get to learn how to use tools. I, I now know how to use a chainsaw, you know, things that you wouldn't get to do. Um, generally um, in other roles as a, as a female. Cool. We might just head back over, over here and we'll sort of just f finalise up a few more things, a few more questions for the, for the guys while we're at it. We'll just get out of the sun. It is pretty warm here in Townsville. Um, doo -doo. Um, just looking forward to the other star, some of the questions here. Um, Connor, Connor Dwyer has asked, have you ever found an IED on or in a vehicle? And I suppose you guys can answer that. Uh, no real ones. I haven't been on operations. Mm -hmm. So it's all, I've only done training yep. scenarios. Um, what have we got? Some other questions here. How many soldiers are on the exercise talisman sabre? I've heard of reports up to 33,000 people involved. There's there's right across the country and yep. overseas. There's a lot of people. So while the, there is a lot going on in Shoalwater Bay, there's also stuff going on in the Northern Territory. The Marines are here. Um, there's also <laughs> all parts of the services. It's a big activity, so thousands. Um, just a, a bit about Army Reserves as we sort of f finish it off. Um, I'll probably pitch this one at, at, at Glenn. W what made you join? What, what made you decide to... Um, to, to join um, the Army Reserves. I, I wanted a few more, a few, a bit more skills, and um, I knew the Army could do that for me. And um, a few of my friends had already joined the Army, so I thought that was a good, um, a good avenue to take. And you said a few more skills. What, what are some of the skills that you've learned since you've joined? Um, the marksman using using a uh, a rifle, very yeah. good. Um, doing demolitions, um, using multiple different tools and equipment. Um, so you say demolitions like it's a word, but there's more to it than that, isn't like there? Like using explosives, yep. which is which is the um, one of the best things that we do. So, for example, there's a bridge and you're tasked with, with blowing it up. Yes, that's correct. And, you know, that's, that, what's it feel like when you, when you, you finish that off and you, the big cloud of smoke and black smoke? Oh, and it's, it's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Real love buzz? It. Yes, yes, love it. Um, and, and I suppose that's sort of an activity that you conduct how often? It's obviously not every weekend, but... Um, well, a lot, we did it last year, um, so we normally try to do it once a year. So building stuff, blowing stuff up, different skills, different weapons, different vehicles... Sounds like combat engineer is a pretty, pretty interesting job. That it is. All right. Well, um, that's pretty much all we've got time for today. All right. That's, um, uh, that's, I think we've covered a fair bit in terms of we've, we've showed you what, what's basically involved in a route clearance. We've showed you what the, the AF-88. We've talked to you through a few things. Um, thanks for tuning in. Tomorrow we're going to go through a, a health centre. Um, so we'll talk about some more health roles. Thanks again for your time and enjoy the rest of Exercise Talisman Sabre. And if you've got any questions about um, how to join, please hit us up and we'll help you out as best we can. So thanks for coming.